Hey guys, Filthy Robot here, bringing you another guides, tips, and tricks video. This time we're talking about the Space Marine late game heroes, and because he's awkwardly uh, situated in terms of everything else, the uh, chaplain, uh, who should be pronounced Diomedes, but it's pronounced something weird instead, like Diomedes or something like that. But anyways, let's talk about these in order. We'll start with this guy. This guy is an odd duck, and he is unfortunately a bit of a duck out of water too. Um, so what does he do? He is a four point elite, which means he is essentially an early game hero. You would consider using him instead of Gabriel. It's an awkward early game hero because it's not a two or three point elite, which means you're seeing something in the vicinity of 90 to 120 seconds later than the three point hero and something like 180 seconds, so three minutes or four minutes, depending on your elite generator situation after uh, the two point heroes, which means you're at a very big disadvantage running this guy as opposed to a two or three point hero, or you're delaying him to essentially seven elite points, which means that when he comes out, he's gonna be weaker than he would otherwise be because the game is later and therefore, and the heroes don't really scale across games. If you didn't notice this, uh, the way that the escalation works means you have more resources, more resources mean more units on the field. And as you upgrade units across the course of the game for damage and health, um, the heroes damage and health stays the same across the course of the game. They don't get uh, upgrades to the best of my knowledge, which means their power is always the strongest when they're first deployed because their re their relative power, excuse me, is always the strongest when they're first deployed because the other units get stronger and more of them across the course of the game where you're not true for heroes. So if you deploy this guy, you're probably deploying him at something in the vicinity of six or seven elite points when you actually deploy him. And this guy doesn't have a lot going for him. So what he does do is when he's in melee, um, his actually primary ability is not uh, lit liturgies of battle, which is okay. It's actually his criticals. Um, where is it? Uh, is it this part or the second part? It's that one. So this is a hero that is based on repeated. He's a melee hero only. Uh, he does uh, 77 normal DPS in melee, which is a lot, especially early game. 77 is very strong versus infantry. It's infantry only really with normal because he's not going to do shit versus buildings. He's not going to do shit versus armor piercing with normal damage. He does have 30 range damage, but 30 range damage is basically nothing. But it does mean if he's chasing, he'll do a little tiny bit of damage, uh, but it's not a lot. Uh, and what he's designed to do is really you want him swinging as much as possible because he gets a crit every third, third attack. Uh, third attack with this thing active uh, and otherwise every sixth attack. Um, and as he's attacking, he generates zeal and fury, which makes his crits better. And whenever his crits happen, it grants shield and other bonuses, uh, basically, uh, to your characters around it. And he's got a cooldown, which is basically active every 15 seconds out of, I think it's 15 seconds active, and then it has a 45 second cooldown afterwards, which is uh, empowering uh, guys around him. He, on paper, synergizes really well with Assault Marines, because he's giving your Assault Marines uh, shields at a point blank radius around him and increased uh, increased damage I think is one of the things increased speed increased damage stuff like this if he's attacking the problem is he's fragile he's only got 3900 health which or 3600 health rather which is not super super fragile it's Gabriel levels of health really but he's slow he's melee and he has no mobility effects and he has no uh, health effects right so whereas Gabriel can uh, leap and run with leap, like he can use his leap to leap over stuff to get away or uh, he has his knockback which reduces incoming damage to him and throws up this shield um, uh, the shield the chaplain doesn't have these things the chaplain has to be attacking the easiest way to deal with this character is the kitem uh, if he's not swinging he's not giving those bonuses if he's not doing those bonuses and he's not in melee then all he's doing is his little pistol damage. You know, I guess it's a double-barreled, is that a shotgun? No, that's a, that's a bolter. His double-barreled like hand bolter of some sort is certainly not doing much damage. So I, I liked this guy on paper. I tried to use him, I've tried to use him in a number, couple of games. I thought he would synergize extremely well with Assault Marines, but his lack of mobility and his lack of survivability options like teleports or uh, shields or this type of stuff really is a problem. The only time he's good is if your opponent's kind of let him do stuff that he shouldn't be allowed to do, like get in combat and just swing for long extended periods of time while your assault marines are fighting nearby you. So he'd probably be good if like you're being pushed and you're like, you know, they're fighting on your barracks where you're reinforcing and you can stay for extended periods of time. Or maybe like, you know, or if you have the banner up and you're getting shields from this location and additional shields from this guy. And, but in general, he's just not very good. He's worse than Gabriel. He's worse than the librarian. He's worse than uh, the kill team. And he's the same role as them. He's a early to mid game hero who's supposedly going to be an anti-infantry role. 
so for me, he's totally overshadowed by the other options. Um, maybe you guys will find uses for him that I haven't. Uh, I did find I did get crushed by him once in a one v one, but that was before I knew what he, how he acted, how he worked, and I think in the future that wouldn't happen uh, from that. Okay, he has two abilities uh, when Dami. Uh, Diomedes is deployed. Elites become temporarily invulnerable to, for a duration instead of dying. Has a long cooldown between usage. Um, I don't really, I haven't really played with this ability that much. Mostly because I don't tend to use him, and often because he dies often before other elites die, anyways, because he doesn't have any defensive options. Which means a lot of times when this would trigger, this guy's already dead, and therefore doesn't trigger for me because it's only when he's deployed. Um, it sounds a little bit like the Eldar Last Chance ability, um, which is quite good because it uh, puts them in a stasis, which means the enemy's wasted like three or four seconds standing around it, not shooting it, and then returns a portion of their health so they have a chance to get away. I don't know if, I think this is just invulnerable, right? So they probably aren't stunned, but they can probably walk away. So you probably, when you get that invulnerability triggered, you probably need to start booking it so you don't die. Yeah, it sounds like it could be useful, but again, I've had a hard time keeping this guy alive. And in the late game, he doesn't do anything. All of his damage is melee based. All of his damage is uh, uh, normal damage, which means it's not very good versus uh, heavy infantry or vehicle stuff. And all of his benefits require him to be swinging his weapon in melee, which means that late game, you're not going to get any of those benefits. Late game, you basically have him hold position in the back and he does nothing except 20 range DPS. So not real thrilled with him. I guess 30 range DPS. Um, his other ability is Final Slam. Instead of dying, the Dreadnought activates the Slam and heals enough to avoid death. Only triggers once. Uh, it's an army doctrine, so you can pull it away from him. I haven't used that very much at all, mostly because oftentimes when my Dreads die, it's not because like there's a big army behind them and they just tanked a bunch of damage and die. It's normally because the army has either been chased off or the Dreads out of position or the Dreads trying to run away. It's of limited utility, in other words. Okay, I'm not trying to say everything about this guy is bad. You might be able to find a way to make that work. This could be good, I suppose. Maybe you get this guy as your third hero, you know, and you deploy him after you deployed your two other heroes and you keep him in the back and you're just using him for Diomedes presence, perhaps. I don't know. It just, he feels weak to me. I haven't had a lot of luck in using him uh, outside of basically 1v1s in the early game. Okay, uh, moving on. Let's take a look at who else we have. We have the Imperial Knight Paladin. This is the Space Marine Nine Point Elite. Uh, he is one of the enormous uh, mech-looking things, the Imperial Knights. And, uh, yeah, let's take a look. 123 melee DPS armor-piercing, 76 ranged armor-piercing DPS. Um, that's kind of awkward because he feels like a ranged character. He's got an ion shield, which is a... Uh, quite a long cooldown but it's a shot absorber that he can put in front of him so it makes him tanky um he is a vehicle so i'm pretty sure you can use the reverse command with him to back him away he's got a very long range uh, ability called piercing shot it has three charges and it cools slow, uh, um, cools down slowly it's a very thin cone uh, not cone very thin line rather uh, line attack um, that has quite a long range that does very high armor piercing damage and keeps going after it hits so it can hit things in a line it does a ton of damage to buildings uh, i wish i had the exact number on it but the exact number isn't listed but it's very good at killing um if you can position him right it's very good at killing vehicles uh but even if you can't position him right it's quite good at killing buildings and he has reaper chainsword sweep which is a point blank true damage knockback stun damage ability that he does like right in front of him which is almost entirely garbage uh, the only time it's ever been useful to me is when people have attacked him with assault marines uh, because then he can like AOE a bunch of assault marines and I think the players who know what they're doing are never going to attack him with assault marines because it's, it's suicidal. Um, what this means is he's a fairly medium to low damage. I mean, in a late game, 100 and, or 76 range DPS isn't a whole lot. And the problem with these big mech guys is they're really slow and they're a huge, easily to identify target. In the late game, there's a lot of stuff that does damage to them. So you can't really use them without some sort of mobility modifier, like a leap ability or something. You can't really use them as a point blank tank. You have to kind of keep them in the background. So that means he does kind of moderate to weak damage in the background while shooting out piercing shot from time to time. And that's kind of all he ends up doing. Um, it's quite expensive to do that. And the opportunity cost of waiting till you have a nine point elite as opposed to immediately deploying like a seven point elite or two, like it, it's there's something to be said about doing like a, a two point elite a three point elite and then like a six or seven point elite because you get all those power spikes earlier in the game 
And the earlier in the game the heroes come out, the more of an impact they have, and also the less uh, powerful the, the non-hero units that you're fighting are. So I love using these enormous mech-looking guys. They're, they're badass looking, they look super fun, but this guy has not been super great. Um, I have found some utility out of piercing shot, and of course having him on the field is great, but uh, I haven't found him to be that amazing. Um, he does have a shit ton of HP, uh, comes in at what, uh, 1100? 11,000 rather heavy armor, which is a ton of HP. If you can figure out how to get him to take damage but not die, then he becomes really awesome because then if you can get the enemies to waste 11,000 damage on him and not quite kill him, that's pretty good. I mean, if he's a big tank, that would be great. But uh, oftentimes it's hard to get him in that position where he gets out alive again, especially since he's so much slower than everything else in the army. Um, he has two abilities. Um, the default one is Paladin's Command, I believe. Um, this is really shit. Devastated Marines gain a shield if they've been stationary for a duration. Uh, there's a lot of problems with that, mainly that, think about this. You deploy a heavy bolter, the Devastator Heavy Bolter Squad. It gets a shield. That's nice. Um, the enemy is attacking it. What is the enemy attacking a heavy bolter with? Almost always they're attacking a heavy bolter with melee. Well, the, the heavy bolter does, like, I think six DPS in melee or something. Like, it's some unbelievably low number. So what that means is the heavy bolter has to run because it's being attacked by melee and it does no damage in melee and it needs to get to another position where it can do damage. The minute it runs, it loses its shield. What? Why the fuck does it, like, are you kidding me? Like, the, the, the lack of like forethought with that ability just is mind boggling. So, um, not great. Um, maybe you could find it useful. Like, I guess it will maybe help versus like bombardment AOEs maybe or something. It just seems terrible to me. Um, so I don't like this. Uh, maybe it's better with las cannons. I'm not entirely sure. Um, certainly it would give las cannons a little bit more survivability in the late game, but las cannons are so weak to begin with that I have a hard time believing it. Um, and the things that las cannons are okay with versus maybe like the big, the big mechs where there's actually going to be enough time to build up charges, they're going to be chasing it anyways. I don't know. I, I have a hard time using Paladin's Command. I don't find it very good at all. Uh, Piercing Shot is decent. Um, Predator Destructors. So there's the Annihilators and the Destructors. The Destructors are the ones that do the AoE damage. So they're the ones that are already kind of decent versus Wraith Guard uh, and Knobs, for example, where they're doing armor piercing damage in an area of effect versus uh, infantry that are clumped up in an area. Um, this gives them another ability, gives them a shot that's very similar to the piercing shot here. They can fire a projectile in a line. Um, it's not a lot of damage. It's not up very often. It doesn't really change the course of the game. It's not. It's nothing like, for example, the Killer Cannon uh, Doctrine. But if you're going to pick the Paladin, this feels like the better of the two to me because you might actually synergize with the unit you actually have a reason to use. Um, so, yeah. So kind of low-range DPS. Good melee, but whoop de doo good melee. All right. Last, not least, let's talk about Imperial Knight Solaria. Okay. So, um... She does 18 melee DPS. So don't put her in melee. I mean, 18 melee DPS. What are we looking at here? She does less melee DPS than the librarian. Um, uh, an orc, an orc boy squad does double her melee DPS. <laughs> the boys do 33 DPS, I believe. However, she does do eight armor piercing, so that's something to be aware of. Um, but she does 149 range DPS. The problem I have with her is, again, I don't know where her range is. 149 range DPS is pretty decent. Uh, she has a couple interesting abilities. Um, one of them, I don't know what this one does. Oh, I did not know that. That's interesting. Um, she has Gatling Barrage, which is a, it's thankfully not a sweep. There's a difference between a cone and a sweep. There are some attacks that sweep. They're like, it's like a cone, but it starts from the right and goes to the left and shoots things in a line, like a big cone line. And there's an actual cone, which does damage to everything in a cone for the duration. Gatling Barrage is the latter. It does damage in a cone uh, and uh, in a line between Solaria. Yeah, it just damages everything in that. Um, and it's okay. Uh, I don't, I've never tried this when overheated Solaria blasts a vent of steam. I didn't even know I could use this while overheated. I didn't know it did something different. So I can knock back and damage in a circle when that happens. That's fine. It's okay. Occasionally enemies will let uh, Solaria get in range of infantry and she can unload this on them. Uh, it's not terrible, um, but it's rare that she gets, it's, it's pretty, pretty point blank for this. Like, um, the range is maybe like a uh, tactical Marine range, maybe a little bit further. So, uh, you have to be fairly close to get that to work. It's okay. Um, the Ironstorm missiles are very similar in effect to the uh, the, uh, the Terminator missiles in the, in the sense that she gets to launch a number of these. They do fairly good damage. They do armor-piercing damage. Um, 
it looks like it changes when her weapons are overheated compared to not overheated. Uh, it's okay, uh, but again, the range isn't amazing. It's a little bit further than I than the the ones off the Terminators, I believe. Uh, so you can use it a little bit more regularly, and she's a little bit tankier than Terminator, so getting her close isn't quite the end of the world. She has 9,000 heavy HP, which is quite a lot. So that's okay, but a lot of times you don't get to use either of these, but that's okay, because she does 149 ranged armor-piercing damage, which means if she's in a fight shooting, she's doing good damage. You'll see chunks of health come out of things she's shooting, especially if they're uh, heavy armor-based units. Uh, gets hot, generates heats when firing using abilities when overheated, she's, uh, when overheated, she's slowed, but deals increased damage. That's interesting, I didn't know that uh, overheating was a good thing. I always thought it was a bad thing, because I'm like, oh, overheating, that sounds terrible. So now I know, just keep shooting. Your abilities change, so that's an interesting interaction. I'll have to see what I think about that as I play with her. I rarely deploy her, honestly. Uh, I, I'm of the mentality that uh, earlier elites are generally better than later elites, so I don't get to use her a lot in multiplayer, which is kind of amusing. Maybe I'll try her out again. And then when Solaria kills a vehicle or elite, she receives a cooldown reduction on her abilities. I don't think you're going to find that very useful. You don't kill uh, elites very often. The vehicle maybe, but these abilities aren't so great that I'm just spamming them. Most of the time, I'd just rather her be DP DPSing. She has two abilities. Uh, the first is Solaria's presence. When she's deployed, whirlwinds leave behind a pool of fire when they explode. It causes damage over time in a circle. That's a fairly decent ability. Um, in the late game, it's not amazing by any means, but in the late game, uh, when you're artillerying in a 3v3, oftentimes you are getting hits on targets, um, and oftentimes those targets are fairly hard targets. They're uh, infantry, they're heavy infantry or uh, vehicles, and having a little bit of burning uh, damage on them isn't terrible. Um, if you have her deployed, that seems fine. However, it won't help you until you have her deployed, and she's the most expensive elite in the game, which means she's going to be the last elite to ever hit the field. So that's something to think about as well. And her other ability is tactical marines equipped with bolters can fire on the move, but do so less uh, rapidly than when stationary. That's an army doctrine ability, so you can, when you get to level 8 with her, you can use this independently of having her, which is interesting. The biggest problem is tactical marines are so bad. Um, and unupgraded tactical marines are the worst type of tactical marines. Getting a tactical marine with a flamer seems good. Getting a tactical marine with plasma, you know, okay. Um, but this is only non-upgraded uh, tactical marines. And uh, this means they can basically, they can't run away while doing this because tactical marines can't run backwards while shooting. So you can't deal with units trying to get into melee for you, which means this is essentially a slight DPS buff if you're chasing with tactical marines. In early game, I don't know, in early game, you don't really, tactical marines versus Eldar are suicide and tactical marine versus the boys, you're running away from them. And in the mid and late game, if you use tactical marines, you're using plasma or you're using flamers. So what the fuck am I using this for? Like, when am I actually chasing somebody with tactical marines? So I don't know. Maybe you can find a use for it, but unupgraded tactical marines certainly aren't strong. Maybe uh, maybe it helps if you have flamers and only one guy in the, the squad is equipped with the flamer and the rest count as bolters. I don't I don't know. Is that is that true? Is that when it applies? You guys let me know if you know, because I've found almost no use for that. So. Let's do a quick recap of the uh, Space Marine heroes as we've gone through them. Um, I find uh, this character quite weak. This guy, mm, weak to moderately okay. This guy, quite weak. Uh, this girl, she's all right, uh, maybe moderately okay. I find the Venerable Dreadnought extremely strong. I find the Assault Terminators, um, oh, this guy's very weak, sorry, excuse me, or moderate to weak, I guess. I find this guy very weak because he never gets on target to do damage. I find the Iron Maw kill team very strong. I find Gabriel uh, moderate, and I find that the Librarian moderate in terms of strength. Just FYI, that's my kind of take on these heroes. Anyways, guys, um, hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully uh, you have some sense of how these heroes uh, play out and uh, what to look for when you're considering purchasing heroes of your own or leveling heroes of your own. And uh, if you enjoyed the content, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, I hope to see you in Dawn of War 3 having fun. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'll see you soon.